We're going to be talking all about hormone dysfunction. And we're going to be doing kind of a deep dive on several different hormones. And so let's start with, um, I'm going to throw up a diagram on the screen for you because you know, when we talk about hormone dysfunction, what does that really mean? That's kind of a vague term. It's kind of broad, right? There are a lot of different hormones, you know, from estrogen, progesterone, cortisol, insulin, testosterone, DHEA, insulin, um, you know, again, thyroid hormone, adrenal hormones. So we've got all these different hormones, but I want to talk about some of the most common symptoms that, that, uh, that are seen associated with hormone disruption. So if you have anything on this list, uh, again, you might consider yourself to be uh, suffering or struggling with a hormone issue. So going through these symptoms, painful and irregular periods. Ladies, if you are having uh, painful cycles where you have to find yourself prop popping naproxen or ibuprofen before your cycle, uh, first of all, you should understand if you take non anti-inflammatories, they can actually cause leaky gut and intestinal bleeding, vitamin C deficiency, folate deficiency, iron deficiency. So if you're finding yourself month after month having to pop these pills to control the pain around your cycle, know that you could actually be helping to increase a leaky gut and further or future autoimmune problems. And you really want to find out the bottom or the root reason as to why you're struggling with pain during that time. But that's a major symptom of hormone imbalance is painful or irregular menstrual cycles. Another symptom, infertility. Um, this is a big one, infertility. So let's just start at the top here. Painful menstrual cycles. Number two, infertility is a very common symptom associated with female bouts. And this could be male or female um, infertility. And I've seen cases where, where you know, the man and woman would come to see me and it wasn't the woman. You know, usually the women get blamed on fertility problems. In some cases, actually the men, had, you know, sometimes it's an inadequate quantity of testosterone that leads to poor sper sperm formation or poor sperm motility. And so sometimes it's the man's fault too. And so hormone imbalance, if you are struggling trying to have a baby, you and your husband or you and your wife struggling and you haven't looked into this, this could be a big, big factor into that. Low libido is another one. So a lot of these kind of falling in under the same category, but low libido, no sexual desire could mean that you have hormone dysfunction. Headaches are very, very common. As a matter of fact, there's a type of PMS called PMS-H, the H standing for headaches. Another type of PMS is PMS-A, the A standing for anxiety. This is another symptom of hormone dysfunction as well. We've also got a PMS-C, which stands for cravings. So if you're one of those around your cycle, you crave a lot of sweets, you know, that might be you as well. So, so painful, periods where there's anxiety, uh, where there's heavy craving, where there's headaches. Let's put an A in after that. You know, those again, symptoms of potential hormone imbalance. Weight gain. If you struggle either with weight gain, meaning you're putting weight on, or you struggle keeping weight on, either one of those could be a hormonal dysfunction or hormonal imbalance. And this goes to those of you who are putting on more fat, um, that could be part of the problem. And it could also be that many struggle to lose weight because they can't put on muscle. So they try to work out and they're not actually putting on muscle. So they're not improving their metabolic function as a result of increased muscle density. So if you struggle with, with gaining weight and again, muscular weight, um, even though you try to work out again, hormonal imbalance could be at the root of that. Big shifts in mood. So mood swings, agitation, irritability, you know, and we're talking about severe swings where, you know, men might get ragingly angry. Women might get very unreasonable and angry. Um, depression as associated with these mood swings as well. All those can be part of a hormonal imbalance. We've also got sleep issues that can arise as a result of hormone imbalance. So trouble sleeping or insomnia, trouble staying asleep, waking up in the middle of the night, um, you know, falling asleep, okay, but waking up in the middle of the night could be a hormonal type of symptom or dysfunction. Skin problems. So we mentioned sleep. We got to mention skin. A lot of times what we'll see is mysterious rashes. When we'll definitely see dry skin, especially as it relates to thyroid hormone and estrogen and progesterone. But we'll also sometimes see skin rashes occurring 
as a result of hormone dysfunction as well. Brain fog, poor memory, cloudy thinking, or loss of the ability to recall words. This is oftentimes associated with low hormone output or poor hormone function. Hair loss, just make a column up here. So brain loss, and I say brain loss, I mean brain cognitive loss. Hair loss, and I'm not talking about the standard hair loss. Uh, women sometimes, you will ask me, Dr. Osborne, I'm losing my hair and I feel like it's coming out more than it has been in the past. Hair, there's cyclical loss to hair where you're gonna see some natural hair loss in the shower and then there's clumps of hair coming out. Very different thing, typically those big clumps or excessive hair loss where you notice your hair is thinning, that oftentimes is linked to a hormonal imbalance as well. Several different hormones can cause trouble with maintaining good hair. Uh, I mentioned anxiety before. I also mentioned uh, depression. Now, I, I, I drew this in up here, but really anxiety and depression, even if you don't have premenstrual uh, syndrome or pre what some doctors call premenstrual dysphoric disorder or PMDD, you could just have anxiety frequently. It doesn't have to be necessarily around your cycle. Same thing with depression. You could just have depression frequently. It doesn't necessarily have to be around your cycle. Hot flashes, another big one. Hot flashes, again, this is a very common one when women are going into premenopause, perimenopause, and then further into menopause. Uh, hot flashes can be a very, very common side effect when estrogen levels and progesterone levels really start to drop. So also symptoms of hormonal imbalance. Muscle aches, not recovering. Um, not recovering from a workout. So you go to work out, you find that your muscles hurt, you're sore all the time, um, and you're not really recovering very well. This is a very common manifestation of hormonal imbalance. And then as well, we have bowel dysfunction. So things like constipation, uh, symptoms like constipation or IBS can also be hormonal dysfunction as well. So if we look at, again, if you struggle with any of these things and you're not quite sure why, maybe you've, you've got a lot of these things, maybe you've got more than one of these things going on and you've gone to your doctor, right? You said, okay, hey, I'm in the doctor's office. Hey doc, I have X, Y, Z, you know, pick your symptoms. And the doctor pulls out a prescription pad and says, you know, you have muscle aches and pains. Let me give you some naproxen. Oh, you have hot flashes. Let me give you some estrogen. You have anxiety and depression. Let me give you a drug for that. that calms you down like a sedative or an antidepressant like an SSRI. Or hair loss, let's try some over-the-counter Rogaine. Or brain or cognitive dysfunction, let's try some, some Vivarin or, or some, uh, uh, let's try some, uh, some stimulant medications, the same kinds of meds that, that doctors oftentimes give for ADD or ADHD, they'll give for cognitive dysfunction. Skin rashes, oftentimes they'll give you steroids. Sleep, they'll give you sleep medications. Mood swings, again, they'll give you the SSRIs or the mood-altering medications. Low libido, oftentimes they'll give you hormone therapies, infertility, um, lots of hormone therapies, uh, especially if you if you go to see an infertility specialist where you're trying to have a child and then again, painful PMS, mostly pain medications around that or birth control pills. A lot of women get birth control pills when they have painful cycles. And, and what I want you to understand if you're listening again and then you're new to functional uh, to the functional line of thought is that taking medicine to reduce symptoms without understanding where the symptoms come from, in my opinion, is never a good idea because you don't actually solve the problem. What you end up doing is you create the need for the rest of your life to stay on a medication. And when you do that, it's a false sense of security or it's what I call pseudo compassion. It's not really compassionate to take medicine to reduce symptoms when you don't know why the symptoms are there. And so what, what we really want to understand is why these things are happening. And that's why we're going to be talking about, about hormones tonight. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.